Minecraft Haunted. Indeed, today we will haunt the dreams of some baby villagers, as well as do some other science and exploration and tactics. I always love doing science. Let's get started. Hello, and welcome back to Exploration and Tactics with Brian. I am here in my kind of area that I've been doing experiments with redstones and pistons and all kinds of new things. I've cleaned it up a bit because I wanted to show off something that I recently discovered. It was kind of an old post on one of the Minecraft Inventions reddits. And yeah, I thought it was pretty cool and I hadn't seen many people play around with it, so I wanted to show it off before. The basic idea is... Say you are Etho and you're building some big redstone contraption and then at some point you accidentally have a water source that goes and spills down and spills on top of your kind of redstone area. It ends up making, you know, a huge mess um, because water, it destroys redstone wire and redstone repeaters and different things. And so the idea here is uh, to create waterproof redstone circuits and there's actually a number of things you can do. And so the one that I'm going to show off here in just a moment is a little redstone clock that is waterproof. Uh, but basically, if instead of using redstone wire and repeaters, you just th use things like redstone blocks and pistons and dispensers and whatnot, you can create a variety of mechanisms, such as this little clock here, just kind of cycles back and forth and uses sticky fishings to push redstone blocks around and then I can spill you know water all over this you know however much I want and the water's not going to wash away any of the redstone uh, because none of these are wash awayable blocks and so that's kind of the general idea why don't I go ahead and turn this off uh, stop ah <laughs> uh. All right, so there would have been a push piston over there, but basically the main thing is this goes back and forth and back and forth uh, with non-sticky pistons, and so power goes to either this piston or this piston, and this one just pushes a block to this piston, which pushes a block to this piston, which pushes to this, which pushes the power over to the other side, then the exact thing, same thing happens on the other side. I'll try to link the little uh, Reddit where I was doing, where I kind of found this design, as well as the general idea of waterproof redstone circuits. And yeah, I was experimenting with this and then I was doing some more experimentation in a creative world. The thing that I would really like to do that I think is probably still impossible, uh, but I've been playing around with it and I haven't actually proven that it's impossible, is to build a redstone flying machine. Basically a bunch of redstone blocks and pistons and sticky pistons and other blocks such that the entire thing manages to like push and pull itself like across the world and you could just like build it in the sky and it would just like fly across the sky. Um, I don't think you can actually do it, uh, but if anyone has brilliant ideas, I would obviously be all ears or all eyes, all... I would want to see it is the thing that I'm trying to say. Uh, but in any case, if none of you who are interested in redstone, if you haven't like fooled around with just trying to build without actually using, I don't even have any redstone wire on me, uh, without using redstone wire or repeaters, um, that could be a fun way to build, and then you can build kind of underwater circuits or circuits that are waterproof and different kinds of things. And so I just want to start off with that idea. But the next thing I want to do, there is a mob in Minecraft that's been in Minecraft for a while that I can't recall if I've ever seen in anyone's videos. Uh, and so I want to experiment with that mob, and so I will see you again in a moment. Let me quickly grab some materials I will want. Uh, yeah, let's grab some cobble. That's probably good. And, oops. <laughs> this is my home village over here. Uh, but those of you who have been with Exploration and Tactics for a while may recall that there's another village over this way. Uh, and so I'm gonna head over there. Okay, I'm over at the other village now, and I'm happy to see that there are still a couple of villagers, although zombies have apparently taken down a lot of the doors. And yeah, so I want to populate this village. And so I'm going to spend some time building out some doors and try and get the villager population back up. Hello, Iron Golem. And I will see you guys in a moment. All right. Well, I have built some more housing. I've put some doors on the existing housing, and I can definitely see that it's working uh, because I see some villagers with the hearts. And yes, here's a little baby villager. Hello. All right, and so step one 
is to get a bunch of baby villagers. And so that is working well. Step two now is going to be more difficult, and I haven't figured out how to do it yet. And so I'll see you guys in a moment after I come up with a brainstorm. Hello, villager. All right, I have built a crazy contraption over here where some villagers can fall in, and then the only exit... Oh, let me plug this up as well. The only exit is through some trap doors over here. And now, this is the part where those of you who don't enjoy seeing uh, violence on villagers should look away. Uh, but I need to get rid of some of the adults so that they're going to have some more babies. Uh, and so the easiest way to do that without getting the iron golem mad at you is to set villagers on fire, because that's kind of like a passive attack, and it's just, you know, they happen to walk into a fire. It's not my fault, so the iron golem isn't mad at me. Uh, but we'll have a few of these guys burn up, and they don't seem to mind. They seem, oh, it's nice and warm. I'll just stand here. I won't, you know, bother going anywhere else. Uh, and then once some of that population dies off, then we'll have some more uh, adults to work with uh, who are going to continue to have babies. Uh, and then, once we have the baby villagers, then we can move on to the next thing that we need to do. So, I will see you guys once again in a moment. It's all gonna come together, guys, I'm sure of it. Alright, and now hopefully we have more babies coming into the village. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start getting some water flowing all around here in order to try to push any villagers who walk into this space over into the center of the area. And the center of the area that I've made here... I'm making a mess of this water. What a surprise. Uh, the center of the area over here uh, has a hole, but it's got half slabs above it. And so as a result... Oh, if I put water in all the sides, it's just going to make one giant infinite water pool. Hold on. I guess I'm only going to have water over here and over there, and then I'll kind of, like, push them the rest of the way. Um, the roof basically prevents any adult villagers from being able to fall down there, because they'll be too tall. So we'll only have baby villagers who are going to go down the hole. And then once we get a number of baby villagers over there, we can move on to the next step of the operation. And so we'll see how that goes in just a moment. All right, here goes a baby villager. I can try to kind of help push him over here. That's right, go down here. It's a great place to go, trust me. It's very fun, you'll enjoy it. <laughs> oh, they're not gonna wanna cooperate. Can I, without accidentally making the entire thing an infinite water pool, kind of help push him over here with all these crazy water currents? You want to go down. And then I guess some of these water currents have actually like spilled down into there, which I didn't mean to do. But even if I could just get one. That's right, go down there. There you go, you're almost there. You can do it, yay! He's down there, okay, great. Um, I think I'll actually try to block this back off. Yeah, so that he's not drowning down there. All right, but we have at least one baby villager down there. And it's turning nighttime, which is also a bonus. Um, I'm gonna pick up some of this so that I have an easier way to walk around. But let's just kind of double check. Yes, we have a baby villager down there. Uh, and then the other thing that we need is a zombie. And since it's turning nighttime, they should be relatively easy to find. And so we'll wait one moment and try to get a zombie over here. All right, I see a zombie. There's some other bad guys around as well. So let's get rid of the skeleton. And now let's get the zombie to see me. That's right. Come up here. Got something nice and tasty for you. Do, 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 do. Are you still coming? Yes, you are. All right, great. So I guess I can open this up, and then is the zombie going to chase me down in here? And then will we find these guys even more tasty? That's what I want to know. Come on, zombie. Oh, he can't find his way. Crap, he can't pathfind his way, and now he's going to go after other villagers. Uh, hey, zombie, come back, come back, come back. Where'd he go? Oh, he got killed by the iron golem. Oh, the irony. Um, rats, I didn't think of that. All right, I guess what I need to do is I need to tear these down. Um, if I use a pick, will that come down quicker? I guess I can just break this block. There we go. Uh, and let's try to get another zombie before the night goes away and try this again. Oh my goodness. I didn't think getting the zombie was going to be the hard part of this particular 
this particular idea to execute. All right, I think I see a zombie over here. So yeah, for those of you who who don't know, um, there are zombie babies in the game. Uh, and I don't recall if I've ever seen them in anyone's Let's Play. I mean, I'm sure some people have done them, uh, but I just haven't seen them. And it happens when a zombie, like, converts a villager into, like, a zombie villager or whatever. Is he going to continue chasing me, or is he going to get interested in the other villagers? I'm not really sure, so let's hope that he stays interested in me and comes over this way, and I can lead him to where I want to lead him. All right, so far seems so good. And let's hope that enough time has not passed that the villagers decide to grow up. Because <laughs> that would be the other problem. Hey guys, I brought you a friend. Alright, who's he going to go after? Me or you? Alright, he seems to be interested in me. But now that he's trapped down here, I think I can get him interested in you guys, perhaps. If I just run away and he can't see me anymore. Back off. Alright. So now, maybe if I move far enough away, he will get interested in the little baby villagers who are down there. And so... The Iron Golem is trying to go down there and get him and defend. There we go! I think it's working. Uh... Yes! Baby zombies! Look at this! Alright, let me come back down here. Um, oh, I looked in Enderman. Did I look in Enderman? That would be sad if I did. All right, and so I'm going to go ahead and kill off the big zombie. <laughs> but look at these guys. They're going after villagers who were up here. But they're baby zombies. And they have, like, a high-pitched zombie noise. And I think that's adorable. Um, and so I wanted to do that. And I was just surprised that I had never seen that before. And I guess these guys have been in the game since, like, 1.4 or something. And so they've been around for a while. If I give them... Yeah, oh, crap, crap, crap. <laughs> They're attacking me. I think uh, some of them, just like normal zombies, some of them can wear armor and uh, kind of like all the crazy things that zombies can do. And will they attack the villagers or will the iron golem attack them? Oh, yep, yeah, the iron golem's attacking them. Uh, and so they are in trouble. One of them's already dead. Uh, yeah, and so... But apparently they don't burn up in the, in the sunlight, and so that's one advantage that baby zombies have over normal zombies. And they don't grow up, uh, according to the wiki. Uh, baby zombie villagers will just, like, stay baby zombies uh, for forever. I didn't see what happened to the other guy. I don't know if he ran off or if the iron golem got him as well, or, or what happened. But I was just amazed that I haven't seen those before. Uh, and so I was just, like, reading around on the wiki, and I was like, oh, I totally need to make some baby zombies. And so this worked okay as kind of like a little farm in order to like separate out, separate out some babies in order to turn them into baby zombies. Uh, I imagine you could do other clever things with this, and I just haven't thought of it yet. But I wanted to do wanted to do some more science here in exploration and tactics. And so that was a quick little experiment. Maybe I'll come up with some great ideas for what to do with baby zombies, or maybe you guys will have some good ideas in the comments. Let me know. Uh, but let me see. Let's check on the time for this episode at this point. I thought of one other piece of science I would like to do. As you guys maybe know, you can put a water bucket inside a dispenser and now it will dispense to the water or pick the water back up. And water buckets turn off nether portals. And so I have a tiny little circuit here. It's just got a comparator and then a repeater on four. And with a wood button, that will basically cause the dispenser to fire twice. And so it will put the water on, which turns out the nether portal and then pick the water back up just watch it happen again over here uh, and so that's an easy way to kind of like turn off a water bucket uh, or sorry turn off a nether portal at a distance and I can always go back and relight it but being able to turn on and off nether portals is one possible way to do a vertical transportation and so I want to experiment with that and so let me set something up all right so here's what I've done directly above my original nether portal in the village I built another nether portal Turns out that one's actually a better connection for the one that's in the nether uh, than this one because my uh, portal that's actually inside the nether is at a higher Y height and so it's closer to this one. And so I have this portal off by default. You can see blue skylight kind of shining through there. But then something that'll be harder to see, and I just realized I didn't hook it up to any mechanism, there is a wooden button right underneath my cursor right over there. And so we should be able to fire an arrow at it and if we manage to hit the button, 
There is a flint and steel inside the dispenser that's up there. And so did I actually manage to hit it? I can't tell. And of course I won't be able to tell from over here. It's a way to kind of remotely ignite or turn on that particular nether portal. Let's see if I managed to hit it and turn it on. Yes, I did, because I can see that it's purple up there now. And so as a result, if I hop into this nether portal and go into the nether, then here I am in the nether in my usual spot. But now if I exit back out this nether portal, now this one that's up in the sky turns out to be the better spot. Oh, and the arrows are still stuck inside, and so this thing is still pulsing. Uh, but I've got a flint and steel in there. And then if I want to turn this nether portal back off, uh, I can just do that, turn it back off. And then anytime while it's off, I have Feather Falling 4 on me, don't I? Yeah, I think I could just take this fall. Well, I guess we're about to find out. Yeah! Splat. I don't think blocking actually does anything, but I always just block whenever I fall these days. But basically now if that nether portal is off, then if I walk into the nether, Yeah, kind of the downfall of this technology is it takes so long to, like, load the nether and then load the overworld again that it takes, like, ten seconds to do this. But then I come out the same place I came back in. And so, basically, we have a button there that we can just shoot in order to kind of, like, change where you come out in the nether. And so you could imagine doing this at, like, a higher height as kind of, like, a convenient way to make vertical transportation. I don't know. This isn't something that I've kind of taken to its logical extreme, but I'm just kind of demonstrating the kind of basic basic facts of what you could potentially do. Uh, I guess that's kind of what I've done in all the science today. Um, with the kind of underwater redstone and the redstone clock, like I'm sure you could make more fancy things out of that. Uh, with the baby zombies, I haven't figured out anything cool to do with them yet, but I'm sure there's cool things that you can do. And then obviously, you can do all kinds of crazy transportation systems through the nether by having portals that you can kind of turn on and off remotely via redstone. Uh, and so, yeah, I was just in the mood to kind of like fool around with some ideas with some things that I've never really done before in exploration and tactics. I'm sure you can find other videos where some people have demonstrated some of these things and done some cool things with them. Or I expect so. Uh, so if there's a particular technique you want to see me do more of in the future, let me know. In any case, I just thought it'd be fun to do some science and exploration and tactics because we haven't done that in a number of episodes. I think that's where I'm going to go ahead and call it for today. So I hope you all are having a great day and I will see you again soon with more exploration and tactics, as well as more of me in the fan server, more of me playing Ruins of the Minecrackers with Zul'jin and Vaughn, and yeah, probably some other stuff, some ultra hardcore or who knows what uh, in the future. So once again, hope you guys are having a great day. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.